Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. to School of Advanced Chemistry. I am Khadr Chuktai. Today I am going to explain October November 2017 paper 1 2 variant. Let's get started. Question number 1. A mixture of sand and sodium chloride can be separated in three steps. Step 1 is to add water into the mixture. The diagram shows step 2 and step 3. Where is the pure sodium chloride collected? It's step 2, it's step 3. After addition of water, uh, the step 2 is to filter it out. And this is the filtrate. B is the residue. And the third and the last step is that is said to be the crystallization, uh, evaporation, crystallization via evaporation and so on in evaporating, in evaporating dish. So this is the last one. So where should be the pure solid sodium chloride? So in this case, you can say that NaCl is a, is a aqueous compound, is a soluble solid, the soluble salt. So it will be retrieved from the last one from C to D. Here C is having NaCl aqueous and after heating it, after evaporation, after I mean the process of crystallization, you will get NaCl that is a pure dry sample of NaCl. So D is the correct option. Question number two. The result of two tests on a solution X are shown. Reagent added sodium hydroxide, white precipitate, precipitate dissolves. Number two, aqueous ammonia added, white precipitate, precipitate remains. So the number one thing is, upon addition of sodium hydroxide, white precipitates are formed, few drops. When excess of sodium hydroxide is added, precipitate dissolves. So it may be aluminium, it may be zinc, and so on, it may be the lead one. Upon addition of aqueous sodium, sorry, aqueous ammonia, again white precipitates are formed, the similar one. The first step is a similar step. The last step is precipitate remains. Precipitate are not going to be soluble. So it means that this, this could not be the zinc. Zinc is soluble in both excess. This is the, you can say the transition element. It, its precipitate should be the blue precipitate. Calcium, if the, you are going to choose the calcium, calcium gives no observation with aqueous ammonia and its precipitate never dissolves. The one and only, the best option, correct option is the A, aluminium ion. Next question. Question number three. Which diagram shows the arrangement of the particle inside the balloon containing a mixture of the gaseous, gases, nitrogen and oxygen? Arrangement of the particles inside the balloon containing the mixture of gases, nitrogen and oxygen. So there must be a homogeneous physical mixture. There must be a homogeneous physical mixture. This is oxygen. This is the notation of nitrogen. So any balloon that is having, that is having the notation of oxygen molecule O2 like that. And this is N2. And two like that. So any balloon that is having the arrangement like that is said to be the proper arrangement and it must be the homogenized mixture, I mean the mixture after the state of diffusion. So it could not be the chemical compound, right? Again, uh, it could not be the mixture of atoms, right? It could not be the non-homogeneous mixture it should be a homogenized mixture. So C is the correct option in this case. Question number four. A student shows the rate of reaction between marble chips, calcium carbonate and dilute hydrochloric acid. A rate of reaction is the basic uh, theme of this reaction in which we are going to find the rate of reaction. Which diagram shows apparatus that is suitable in this experiment? Number one, here are the marble chips, hydrochloric acid, and ta water tank, you can say, 
and with the measuring cylinder, inverted measuring cylinder. Yes, it is true. This apparatus can be used to find the volume of the CO2 that is being formed in this reaction with respect to time, I mean with help of stopwatch and so on. Come toward the second one, here is the loose plug and uh, marble chips, HCl, the CO2 that is being formed will allow to leave the reaction mixture and here is the balance that will check the mass, decreasing mass with, with respect to the time, with the passage of time. Again, 2 is also the correct one. Come towards the third one, hydrochloric acid and butyrate and here are the marble chips but the, this uh, uh, flask is having the open mouth. So CO2 will uh, go outside and there will be no any sort of the measurement with respect to the change in mass, change in volume and so on. Come toward the fourth one. In this case, uh, we are going to add HCl over here. Here is the gas range. Yes, it is true. Yes. I mean, this gas range can be used to, uh, to check the volume of CO2. It is used to it is used for the measurement of the CO2. So once again, this is also correct. So one, two, and four, D is the correct option. D is the correct option. Come towards question number five. A chemist wishes to separate and identify the mixture of substances using paper chromatography. The diagram shows apparatus used. The solvent is water. The solvent front is allowed to reach at the top of the paper before chemists remove the paper from the solvent. Which problem does this cause? Which problem does this cause? Once again, a chemist wants to separate and identify the substance with the help of paper chromatography and the solvent is water. Solvent front is allowed to reach to the top of the paper. Solvent front is allowed to reach to the top of the paper before chemists remove the paper from the solvent. So in this case, as if the solvent is going to move toward the top of the paper, it may, it is also possible, uh, any highly soluble component, any highly soluble solvent may, that is very much soluble in the water, may travel with the speed of the water molecule. So it may go beyond the limit or it may go to the edge of the paper, top edge of the paper. So its RF cannot be properly calculated. However, let's see the, what are the different basic options. Which problem does this cause? This causes the spot nearest to the bottom of the paper to catch up with the spot above. No, that is not the one. This makes it impossible to calculate the RF values. It could be. This makes it impossible to use locating agent. No, not. This result is safety hazard. No. Once again, the correct and appropriate option is this one. Its RF value cannot be calculated. So B is the correct option. Question number six, which particles contain same number of electron and neutron? Same number of electron and neutron. Once again, you can see it over here. Here the proton is equal to, uh, I'm sorry, electron is equal to 18 in this case and neutron is equal to 20. In this case, electron is equal to 12 plus 12 minus 2, I mean 10, and neutron is equal to 24 minus 12, that is equal to 12. In this case, electron is equal to 9 plus 1, I mean 10, and uh, neutron is equal to 19 plus 9, again equal to 10. And here, 16 um, plus 2 is equal to 18 electrons, and the neutron is equal to 32 minus 16, I mean 16. So these two numbers are the equal. So F, I mean C is the correct option in which both neutron and electrons are the same. Which statement for all metal? Which statement is correct for all metal? They are hard and brittle. They are made up of lattice of positive and negative ions. They conduct electricity by movement of electron. They conduct electricity by movement of ion. The the accurate, the most accurate statement that is applicable on all type of metal. All type of metal conduct electric current because due to the movement of the free electrons. So this is the common feature of all metal. This statement is true for all metals. So C is the correct option in this case. Question number eight. X represents the element of the atomic number 8 and Y represents the element of the atomic number 19. 
atomic number 8 and why is the atomic number 19 the two elements react together to form a compound i mean a chemical compound which row is correct for the compound formed so let's see over here come towards the periodic table first of all element x that is having eight atomic number element 19 that is having 19 atomic number first of all we have to see the uh, actual name of these element and group number of specially these elements so uh, let me check it from the data booklet let me check it from the data booklet let's see over here atomic number uh, atomic number eight right this is the atomic number eight and next one is atomic number 19 uh, this is the potassium one so one is potassium and other one is oxygen potassium and oxygen this is x and this is y you know that x is oxygen x is oxygen and y is the potassium it belongs to group number one it belongs to group number uh, six so it is having minus two plus minus will cancel out one over here two over here so answer will be k2o or k2o you can write it over here like that uh, it means that there must be x y two and one is metal other one is a typical non-metal uh, they will make i mean ionic compound they will make ionic compound preferably they will make ionic compound right so ionic compound and uh, wire two there must be wire two x so b is the correct option Question number 9, empirical formula of a liquid compound is C2H4O. To find empirical formula, it is necessary to know what is basically you need, you are required uh, to find the empirical formula. The density of the compound, no. Percentage composition by mass, yes. Relative molecular mass, no. It is not necessary. It is necessary to find the molecular formula. It is necessary to find the molecular formula. Uh, the last one is volume occupied by the one mole of gas compound no so once again b is the correct option question number 10 25 gram of hydrated copper 2 sulfate crystals are heated to produce an hydrous copper 2 sulfate here is the equation what is the mass of an hydrous copper 2 sulfate form whenever you are having the equation so you are supposed to use unitary method unitary rule or unitary method you can also call it the ratio proportion method what is to be find uh, that is a CUSO4 solid from hydrated crystals it's a given I mean the given is CUSO4 dot 5 H2O so let's see over here according to the balanced chemical equation what is the mass of copper sulfate simple copper sulfate's mass is equal to 160 gram what is the mass of this whole hydrated copper sulfate i mean it is 160 plus 5 into 18 uh, 160 and 5 let me check it over here 160 plus 5 multiply by 18 an answer is 250 an answer is 250 uh, so so 250 gram when the 250 gram of uh, this copper in had sorry hydrated copper sulfate is allowed to heat then 160 gram of copper sulfate is formed when we are using or heating let's suppose one gram how much copper sulfate will be formed 160 over 250 and at the moment we are going to heat 25 gram then 160 over 250 into 25 0 will be cancelled out 25 will be cancelled out with the 25 and 16 i'm sorry 16 is the 
appropriate answer. 16 is the answer. So, B is the correct option in this case. Come towards the next one. When which sample contains most atoms? Once again, which sample contain the most atom? 0 0.5 mole of water. There is no need to find the number of atom. Just find the moles of atom. You need to find moles of atom. How to find the mole of atom? That's the easiest way you can say. H2O, uh, 2 plus 1, total 3 moles of atoms are the, over here. 3 into 0 0.5, that is equal to 1.5. In this case, it is CO2, carbon dioxide, I mean 1 plus 2, 3, and uh, 3 multiplied by this whole mole, that is equal to again 3, I mean these are the mole of total atoms in CO2. In case of CH4, 4 plus 1, that is equal to 5, and uh, 5 into 1, that is again 5. HCl, 2 moles of atoms are over here and 2 multiplied by 2 is equal to 4. So 5 is the highest answer in this case that is having the most mole of atom. It means that that is also having most number of atom. So C is the correct option. Question number 12. The relative atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5. What is the math of two mole of chlorine gas? It's quite simple, very much simple you can say. Uh, mole is equal to mass over MR. That is a formula that we, we, we can use and, on, and I'm going to use it over here. Uh, mole is equal to two mass we are going to find what is a MR, it's AR and you know Cl2, the molecular formula of chlorine is Cl2, so it will be 2 into 35.5, 35.5 that is equal to 71 and mass will be equal to 2 into 71 that is equal to 142, D is the correct option. Question number 13. One mole of organic compound Q is completely burned in oxygen, produce exactly three mole of water. What compound is the Q? Three mole of water mean, here is the indication that the, 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 the mole of water is equal to three. It means that, three mole of water means that the hydrogen, one mole of, if the one mole of compound is going to combust, it must having six hydrogen it must having six hydrogen. Then let's see over here which one hydrocarbon is having six hydrogen. It's having six hydrogen. I mean number of mole of water is equal to half mole of number of atoms of the hydrogens. Half mole of uh, hydrogen will be equal to the mole of water, right? So this is the simplest case, as simple as you can say, and we can solve it like that. The next one in experiment, one mole of Powdered copper and one mole of powdered zinc are placed in a flask. Dilute acid containing one mole of acid is added to the flask. The flask is left until is left until the reaction, all the reactions, if any, are complete. Which diagram shows the result of the experiment? Colorless solution, uh, one mole of copper. In this case, blue neutral solution, 0 0.5 mole of copper plus 0 0.5 mole of uh, zinc. In third one, blue solution, one mole of zinc, colorless solution, plus one mole of copper and one mole of zinc. One second, you can see it over here. If you are going to add zinc and copper, zinc and copper, one mole copper, one mole zinc, copper will not react with any sort of dilute acid, right? It will not react. This zinc will react with the acid. And uh, here the da is normally a dilute acid. Zinc solution is colorless solution. Its solution will be the colorless. So num number one, the solution should be the colorless. Number two, what should be remaining over here? What should be remaining over here? Uh, I mean, there must be the copper should be remaining over here and uh, zinc must be at least, 
less than that of 1 mole. If the zinc is present, then it should be less than that of 1 mole. So it's equal to 1 mole. I mean, this diagram is going to show there is no reaction. I mean, zinc is not going to react in this case. It's wrong. And once again, the one and only, I mean, in this case, now A is the correct option. In this case, all the zinc has been reacted and one mole of copper is left behind and solution is colorless solution. Question number 15. A sample can be made using two different metal as the electrode and aqueous solution as electrolyte. The statement about the simple cells are correct. A greater voltage is produced using magnesium and silver than using magnesium and copper. Yes, it is true. Magnesium and silver are the furthest apart in the reactivity series as compared to magnesium and copper. So the more the difference of the metal in the reactivity series, greater the voltage. Yes, it is true. Number one, I mean, first possibility is the correct one. Electrolyte in an aqueous solution contain both positive and negative ion. Yes, it is true. Electrolyte in an aqueous solution contains both positive and negative ion. It is fact. Third one, more active metal will release electron. Yes, it is also true. More metal has to release electron and so on. So A is the correct option. Question number 16, magnesium can be prepared by electrolysis of the molten magnesium chloride MgCl2. What are the equation for the reaction that occurs uh, at positive electrode and at negative electrode? Let's see over here. First of all, I'm going to examine this one. It's a molten MgCl2. So at anode, at anode, that is a positive terminal, we will have two Cl negative ion liquid. They will go to the anode and they will lose two electron to make Cl2 gas. What about the cathode? What about cathode? It's a negative terminal in this case. And magnesium two positive ion will go to the cathode and receive the lost electron, I mean two mole of electron to make magnesium solid. So now can you can compare the uh, appropriate, I mean the correct option in the both columns. In both columns, the appropriate option is the C1. These two equations are the correct equation. So C is the correct option. Three different solutions were electrolyzed using inert electrode. Number one, aqueous sodium chloride. Number two, concentrated hydrochloric acid and the third one, dilute sulfuric acid. Which solutions produce hydrogen act at negative electrode? First of all, let me see over here, uh, sodium versus chlorine. Sodium never goes to for the uh, deposition or for the, uh, to, uh, to gain the electron. So instead of sodium, there will be the hydrogen. H positive ion will be, is more reactive, is uh, uh, more reactive than the sodium positive ion. Sorry, sodium positive ion. So in this case, hydrogen gas will be formed. In case of concentrated hydrochloric acid, yes, it is true. In case of concentrated hydrochloric acid, once again, it positive ion are in high quantity. Again, there is the formation of H2 at cathode. Dilute sulfuric acid, again, it is, a, I mean, acid and it, it is having, even it is dilute, it is having H positive ion. So uh, it will again having a positive ion and hydrogen gas will be formed. So in all these three options, there is the possibility of formation of hydrogen on cathode, I mean negative electrode. So A is the correct option. Question number 18, compound wire react with oxygen. This reaction has the positive enthalpy change. I mean delta H is equal to positive reaction is endothermic. It means that reaction is endothermic right what information can be deduced about the y and its reaction with oxygen right compound y can be used as a fuel no because it is an endothermic reaction so it cannot be used as a fuel compound y could be a hydrocarbon i don't think so whenever hydrocarbon are allowed to react with oxygen they combust they give the exothermic reaction once again it's wrong in the reaction, the energy needed to break the bond is greater than energy released when bonds are formed. Exactly, this is the proper description of 
endothermic reaction where energy needed to, the, to break the bond is higher, is greater than energy released when the bonds are formed. So C is the correct option. The formation of the liquid water from hydrogen and oxygen may occur in three steps. Number one, number two, number three. Which, stage, which stages are endothermic? Number one, in this case, you can see that only atoms are going to be formed, molecules, I mean the bonds are going to be broken. So number one stage is endothermic. It is endothermic. The next stage in which you can see that atoms are going to meet together to make a molecule. I mean bonds are going to form. There were no initially bond present between these two atoms or within the atoms. So it is exothermic reaction. Exothermic reaction as the bonds are being formed. In this case, once again, only bonds are going to be formed. So this reaction is exothermic reaction. What about the next one? When the gaseous H2, I mean steam, is allowed to cool uh, to become the liquid. So this is, yes, this is once again an exothermic reaction, an exothermic reaction. So which stages are endothermic? The one and only is B1. It's a B1. Question number 20. Sulfur trioxide is produced by the following reaction. SO2 plus O2 goes to S2 mole of SO3 and reaction is exothermic. Which change in the condition would produce greater amount of SO2 at equilibrium? I mean any change that could shift the equilibrium towards right hand side. Which one is this one? Uh, adding the catalyst? No, it never changes the position of equilibrium. Increasing the pressure, uh, let's see over here, 3 moles over here, 2 moles over here. On increasing the pressure, equilibrium will shift towards the right hand side. Yes, it is true. On increasing the pressure, equilibrium will shift towards the right hand side and I mean more amount of CO3 will be formed. So B is the correct option. B is the correct option. Question number 21, magnesium reacted with dilute sulfuric acid. Two experiments were carried out. Experiment number one, 24 gram of magnesium was reacted with 100 centimeter cube of one mole per dm cube sulfuric acid. And in second experiment, 24 gram of magnesium was reacted with 50 centimeter cube of two mole per dm cube sulfuric acid. Uh, here is lying the difference. You can say a 50 centimeter cube and uh, it's one mole per dm cube, it's two mole per dm cube and so on. So in both cases, uh, the number of magnesium, that is the limiting reactant, you can say, uh, the basic reactant, the solid reactant, it is having same moles in both experiment. So the straight line portion, I mean, this is a straight line of the flat portion of the curve. Flat portion of the curve of the both experiment should be the same. Flat portion of the curve should be the same because both are having same number of moles, same mass in quantity. So, I mean same, uh, so if the, the flat portion should, should be the same, so D and C are the incorrect option. Now come towards the A and B. Which one is more reactive, uh, sorry, which one is going to be show the more speed of the reaction? That is two mole of sulfuric acid. Which one is having more concentration and which one is having less volume? these, I mean, sort of stuff uh, of the experiment or this experiment will go to show the high speed of reaction. This is experiment number two. Experiment number two should be more closer to the y-axis. Experiment number two, experiment two, the line that is showing the experiment number two is a dotted line. It should be more closer to the y-axis. So A is the correct option. Which statement is correct for both aluminium and iron? Both form two positive ions. No, it's wrong. Aluminium belongs to group number three. It will make aluminium three positive ions. Both have amphoteric oxide. No, aluminium, just aluminium is having amphoteric oxide. The manufacturing of both metal involves the reduction of the metal ions. Yes, it is true. Both metals are formed by the reduction process. Reduction mean the, the ion of the both element gains electron and change itself into the 
pure element that is set to be the metal. So C is the correct option. C is the correct option. Question number 23. A household cleaning compound is used to remove calcium carbonate from bathroom surfaces. The compound direct with the calcium carbonate to form a soluble salt, carbon dioxide and water. And you know this is the indication of an acid. When any material that is allowed to react with a calcium carbonate, any sort of carbonate, and it is going to make soluble salt, carbon dioxide, and water, it means that it means that it is an acid. What is the pH of this cleaning compound? Its pH must be less than seven. And here it is. I mean, A is the correct option. Only A option is the acidic one. 24. Dilute hydrochloric acid is added separately to the sample of copper 2 oxide and copper 2 carbonate. Hydrochloric acid, that is an acid, is allowed to react with the copper 2 oxide. It's a base. Yes, it is true. And the copper carbonate, yes, it is also a base. You can say it is salt and base, both you can say, uh, uh, which Ro correctly described show the whether copper chloride is produced or not. So, copper chloride will produce in both cases, I mean Cu2O plus HCl goes to CuCl2 plus H2O and 2 mole of HCl will be used. In case of uh, CuCO3 plus HCl, uh, there will be the formation of CuCl2 plus H2O plus CO2. So in both cases, there is a formation of CuCl2 copper 2 chloride is formed. Yes, it is true in all these both cases. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, copper is also going to react, is supposed to react, I, I mean, if the copper is allowed to react with a dilute acid, it will not react. Copper does not react with any dilute acid. So copper cannot do this one. Otherwise, all can make copper 2 chloride. So the last one, I mean D is the correct option. D is the correct option. Which ions are present when hydrochloric acid has exactly neutralized the sodium hydroxide? Which ions are present when hydrochloric acid exactly neutralizes the sodium hydroxide? NaOH plus HCl goes to NaCl plus H2O. If they have exactly neutralized each other, so there will be no HCl or NaOH left behind in the beaker. There will be NaCl, that is aqueous. I mean, the high concentration of ion will be sodium and Cl negative ion. But because of H2O, there might be the, uh, the presence of in less quantity, H positive ion and OH negative ion may also be present. So overall, total number of ions will be sodium ion, Cl negative ion or H positive ion. But in high concentration, you can say the major concentration will be because of NaCl. Uh, that will be because of NaCl. So total number of which ions mean total number of ions, you can say. So according to, to this statement, the A is the uh, correct option. Right. Which experiment will result the formation of white precipitate and aqueous barium nitrate added to the sodium chloride? I mean NaCl and barium nitrate BaNO3. Uh, I'm there is a no no any sort of feasibility for this reaction. This reaction won't happen because Na uh, BaCl2 is a soluble compound. NaNO3 is again a soluble compound. So there is no any sort of the precipitation or reaction you can say. Aqua sodium carbonate added to the calcium chloride. Yes, there may be CaCl2 aqueous plus Na2CO3 goes to CaCO3 plus N2 mole of NaCl. Yes, this calcium chloride is insoluble. Calcium chloride is insoluble, it's soluble, it's soluble, and it is insoluble. So uh, this experiment will result the formation of 
white precipitate calcium carbonate as the white precipitate is white compound that is insoluble compound so b is the correct option which statement about the group 1 and group 6 element is correct they conduct electricity when molten no that is not true for the group 7 element yes it is true for the group 1 element they form compound covalent compound when are bonded to the non metal no only group 7 element can make the covalent compounds but group 1 metals are supposed to form the ionic compound they exist as diatomic molecule not the both one it is again true for the group 17 element they make diatomic molecule but the group 1 members never make any sort of diatomic molecule the last one when group 1 element combined with group 7 element ionic compound are formed yes it is true like NaCl it is group number from group number 1 it is from group number 7 so D is the correct option question number 28 the element helium argon and neon are the noble gases which statement is correct all these elements have the 8 electron no the helium is having 2 electron in its last shell, it is having 8 electron, it is having 8 electron and so on. Organ is used to react with impurities in the manufacturing of steel. No, it's not correct. Helium is used in the balloon as it is more dense than air. The first part is true, but the second part is wrong. No, it is not more dense, it is less dense than air. Neon is used in the light bulb to give the inert atmosphere. Yes, it is a fact and it is true. So D is the correct option. Which row shows the correct catalyst for each industrial process? Manufacturing of the sulfuric acid, manufacturing of the ammonia, and manufacturing of the or the manufacture of the night margarine. Number one, in case of sulfuric acid, vanadium 5 oxide is used. In case of ammonia, iron is used. In case of margarine, nickel is used. So C is the correct option. In solid state, germanium has the same structure as diamond what is likely melting point of the germanium uh, in solid state it is having the same structure as diamond i mean it is having the macromolecular structure so it is uh, uh, melting point will be the highest one and you know the melting point of the diamond is in thousand almost around about the four thousand so above 800 is the correct option Aluminium is the metal that is often used to make caps for the bottles. When thrown away and buried in the soil, the cap do not corrode. Why is this? I mean, I mean, aluminium is not supposed to get corrosion. What is the reason behind it? There is only one reason. There is only one reason for its lack of reactivity. That is this one. Aluminium is protected by the layer of its oxide. So, D is the correct option. Question number 32, which statement about group 1 metal is correct? They are hard compared to the most of other metal. No, they are soft. They form colored compound. No, they do not form colored compounds. They have high densities as compared to the other metal. No, they are having low densities. They form ions with the one, they only form ions with the one positive charge. Yes, it is correct. It's true. Question number 33. CFC compound were used as aerosol propellant. The structure of one CFC compound is over here is shown. Which element in this compound caused the depletion of ozone in the atmosphere? That is this one. The Cl atom, the Cl radical from this compound, there is the formation of Cl radical, Cl atom that react with the ozone. So, the option is the answer is chlorine and B is the correct option. B is the correct option. Dry air is a mixture of gases which 99% is nitrogen uh, and oxygen. What is the main constituent of the remaining 1%? Argon, helium, hydrogen and water vapor. The answer is argon. Why is, chlor is chlorine added? 
to the water supply. What is the purpose of addition of chlorine? That is, I mean, simply to disinfect the water. Chlorine is used, the first option, to desalinate. No, it's wrong. Uh, to kill bacteria that may be present in water, yes, it is true. So this is the basic function of addition of chlorine. Question number 36, when, an, when the alcohol of molecular formula C4H10O is oxidized, the molecular formula of the acid is formed. I mean, this is the 4-carbon alcohol, and I'm going to write it over here. For example, CH3, CH2, CH2, and the last carbon is having OH, uh, I'm sorry, is, is having OH and H, alcoholic group. When it is oxidized to make uh, carboxylic acid, then this carbon atom loses, this carbon atom loses two hydrogen atom. Uh, overall, you can say, I mean, the overall in comparison with the carboxylic acid, you can see that CA3, CH2, and CH2, only the change is visible on this carbon atom. There will be one oxygen, two less hydrogen, I mean, two hydrogens are removed, one oxygen is introduced, and this is uh, the carboxylic acid that can be made from this butane ore. So what should be its formula? Here are uh, four carbons and uh, three plus two, five plus two, seven plus one, eight. Eight hydrogens should be there and two oxygen should be there. So C is the correct option. C is the correct option. Question number 37, the diagram shows the structure of five hydrocarbons and one, two, three, four, five, which three hydrocarbons are the isomers of each other? What is uh, the isomerism and or what are the isomers compound having same molecular formula but different structure formula? What is the molecular formula of hydrocarbon one? One, two, three, four, five. Five carbons are over here, three, plus 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 hydrogens are over here. In this case, you can say again, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbons, and uh, how many hydrogen? Again, 3, 3, 3, 3, 12 hydrogens are over here. In this case, you can say in the fourth one, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbons, and 3 plus 3 plus 3, I mean 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, yes. Again, it is also having the same molecular formula. In quest, uh, option 5, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4 carbons are over here. Carbons are not equal. In case of 3, 1, 2, 3, again 4 carbons are over here. So carbons are not equal. And uh, the second one, you can see that if they are having the same carbons, I mean 4 carbons and 10 hydrogen, both are having 10 hydrogen and they may be the isomers of each other. Yes, it, there is the possibility. Uh, however, once again, check me there. Uh, no, because it is saying that uh, the, there must be the three hydrocarbons. So one, two, and four. One, two, and four are the hydrocarbons. Those are the isomers of each other. So A is the correct option. Question number 38. Which alcohol and acid will react together to make an ester? That is this one, that is ethyl ethanoate. This one portion is from alcohol. This one portion is from alcohol. And this portion that is having both oxygen atom, it will be from acid. So the acid will be this one, that is ethanoic acid. And alcohol must be the ethanol, this one. So what is the correct option? Ethanoic acid and ethanol, C is the correct option. C is the correct option. Question number 39, which compound has the pH of less than seven in aqueous solution? So, so it must be an acidic one. There must be C double bond OH if it is an organic acid. So there is no like that, no COH, no COH, the one and only is a C1 that will show, that will make the pH less than 7. The last question, question number 40, which statement about polymer is correct? Nylon and terylene are produced by the addition polymerization. No, these are formed by the condensation. 
Nylon and terylene both contain amide linkages. No, nylon have amide linkage, but the terylenes are not having the, I mean they are having ester linkage. Simple sugar can be produced by the hydrolysis of protein. No, hydrolysis, hydrolysis of the proteins gives us the amino acids. The last one will be the correct one. Starch containing the element carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Yes, it is true. So that's all for today. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.